takes a certain kind of motivation to wade through the chilly Arctic water scanning the shore. Dustin Whalen is driven because he's on a search. It appears to be futile. There's nothing there. Every single year we come and we lose our time-lapse camera. This is our third year trying, and as of today, this is our third year failing. Their equipment has routinely fallen victim to what they've come to this remote island to research. It's the water just streaming off that cliff. And it's not from a lake or a river, it's from the, the melt. The rapid rate of erosion. It's very hard to predict on, on where this change is going to come from, and it's also very hard to capture. Because chunks of Pelly Island are falling into the Beaufort Sea, it's crumbling so quickly that it's considered one of, if not the fastest eroding island in the world. Pelly lies north of the Mackenzie Delta off the coast of the Northwest Territories. No one lives here, but it is home to an Environment Canada weather station. Those monitoring it started to notice how quickly the island and others neighboring it were washing away. Which is why four years ago, scientists started making the trek to this area every summer. And each time, there was less and less of the islands to see. The average erosion rate for this area is about one and a half meters a year. And so in here, we're at a site that, that is eroding at 40 meters a year. The change is so dramatic because of how much ice and permafrost is below the surface. This is ice that has been frozen in the cliff and now is, is melting. As the ice melts, it trickles down the cliff carrying some of the sediment with it. But that's not the only thing carving out the shore. The coast is being hammered by waves, making the ground unstable and precarious Whoa! <laughs> for the researchers and their cameras. That's why scientists from Natural Resources Canada are turning to drones to help them survey the changes. We can use that aerial imagery to compare from year to year to see what the coastal erosion rates are. The footage helps them develop 3D models to accurately track the disappearing islands. And those forces eating away at them are playing out across the Arctic. Researchers from around the world are monitoring Canada's northern coast, as well as parts of Alaska and Russia, where the shorelines are crumbling. The areas in red are where the fastest erosion is happening. They're losing up to 10 meters a year, which is why what's taking place on Pelly is so extreme. Obviously, the, the, there's a bunch of climate-driven factors, you know, whether it's w warmer air temperature, w warmer seawater, more storms. These kind of things are affecting the entire region. The erosion taking place here may be the most dramatic in Canada, but it's happening all along coastlines, and it's having a severe impact on some communities. 100 kilometres to the south is the hamlet of Taktayaktak. <laughs> A community now threatened by the coast it's perched on. You can see big cracks in the ground here where the uh, ground is shifting and thawing, and uh, this area washed out last year. Daryl Nezagalowak is the mayor of Tuck. He says erosion has been a problem here for decades, which is why the community has been gradually shifting away from the water. We have been slowly moving for over 30 years. 30 years ago, this was the centre of the community. Now it's further inland. But people still live here and the erosion is getting worse. The ice breakup is taking place earlier each spring. And more open water means more storms, pummeling the shore and the homes. The community tried to slow it down by placing large cement slabs over the shore. They tried fabric to stabilize it. Boulders were brought up in barges and stacked along the coast but none of it has stopped the waves. Well, the erosion here was uh, really happening fast last year. Which is why last winter, four homes were moved off of these lots and further inland. Four others still remain. All it would take is, is one or two big storms and these houses you see behind me would be gravely at risk. It gets pretty dangerous sometimes. 
One of those houses belongs to Sandy Adam. 14 people live in this home. The property used to have a shed, but that's all gone now. So the family's possessions are scattered around what little is left of their backyard. Every time the water rises up, all that rock gets washed away. Right now it's starting to slide again. He's worried about the fall. When the winds pick up, so will the waves. He's applied for financial help to move the building, but he hasn't settled on a new place to live yet. I like this place because when whales come by, you could see them swim right by. I like being by the water. Just not this close to the water? Not this close. <laughs> and when my grandkids play out, I'm scared they might break their legs on these rocks. Don't fall, babe. Stay up here. The goal is to move these last few houses as soon as possible, and no new development will be allowed to take place here. So far, the Hamlet's harbour has been relatively untouched, thanks to Tuck Island. It lies off the coast and bears the brunt of most of the advancing waves. But as you can see from this time-lapse video, it too is slumping into the sea, which is why research is also underway here. This much water uh, m melting out, it's obvious that there's so much frozen ice. Back on Pelly, there's not much to do but watch and measure. Historical photographs lead researchers to believe that the island had once stretched a kilometer further into the sea. It's not that wide. I think we maybe only have another kilometer to go. You know, let's say another 50 years and, and this island will be, will be gone. That may be of little consequence to the average person. After all, Pelly is just one island in a part of the country most will never see. But it is a striking example of the quickening pace of change that's happening throughout this region and the power of a warming climate on Canada's Arctic. Briar Stewart, CBC News, Pelly Island, Northwest Territories.